If you owned a Nintendo Wii back in the day, odds are that you've got some fond memories of games like Super Mario Galaxy, Twilight Princess, and of course, Wii Sports. But I never really hear anyone reminisce about Wario Land Shake It, a funky little platformer starring everyone's favorite doppelbatty. If you were even aware of it in the first place, it probably came off as just another excuse to push the waggle tech that was so pervasive at the time, but it actually might be one of the wackiest and most satisfying to complete platformers I've ever played. So guard your pockets, everyone. It's time to complete Wario Land Shake It. Here comes a new challenger! Yeah! Danger! Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Recently, on my Let's Play channel, Super Beard Brothers, I played this awesome game, and I finally got around to completing it fully to bring it here to The Completionist. Brett, will you please pick a track already and stick with it? No, no, no it's my turn. I let you have your turn. Don't do that to me. Do not rush me. <sighs> Normally, I'd be welcoming you from the office, but on the way to work today, Brett and I got into a discussion about the musical influences of Mario, and so, here we are for this episode. Mm, mm, what you know about this one, huh? Oh, that bass line is thicker than Malto meal. Mm. Look, I don't care what you say, that doesn't make this Motown. You're just saying that because there's no vocals in it. How can it be Motown without vocals? It's implied, use your ears. What? Okay. Where the hell did this game come from? I think I may have heard about it back in the day, but if I did, I don't remember a damn thing about it. At the time, Wario was known more for cheating at sports and chewing on his own bike than he was for his own series. And no, not the one with the weird minigames that make me question myself. His other series, the one that was thriving in the 90s but disappeared soon after. Shake It was always kind of an outlier in the Wario Land series since it was the first one to appear on a home console as opposed to a handheld. The folks who played it seemed to like it, but that was like, what, 12 people total? This game didn't exactly set the world on fire when it came to sales, which is probably why we haven't heard a peep out of the Wario Land franchise since. This was Wario's last hurrah as a platforming star before transitioning completely into a nut bar MC for mini games. And it's a shame that Nintendo decided to put the kibosh in the series because Wario Land Shake It is freaking tight. It's like a beautiful refugee from a 2D era of platforming that milked the capabilities of the Wii for all they were worth. And yes, that does include the obligatory motion controls. But Shake It doesn't just refer to the Wii modes. The whole game takes place in the Shake dimension whose inhabitants, the Murfles, are being subjugated by a big fat Viking baddie named the Shake King. That's right, the Shake King. The only Murfle lucky enough to escape implores our main man Wario to help out, but this dude couldn't care less. I mean, he's picking his nose pinky style while this little guy pours his heart out. But then the little Murfle mentions the potential prize of a bottomless money bag, which is all Wario needs to hear to jump into action, platforming, smashing, and throttling his way to that sweet cash. Right from the get-go, Shake It stands out from the crowd. Both it and its protagonist have a lot of personality. In fact, Shake It may be one of the most delightful Nintendo platformers that we've ever encountered. <laughs> Let's not forget that the first time this guy popped up, he was jacking Mario's castle in Mario Land 2. And then this fool makes one of the thuggiest moves of all time when he says, Mario Land 3? You mean... <laughs> Wario Land 1. Seeing something he wants and just taking it have been a part of Wario's character since the very beginning. And creating a game that revolves around jacking stuff might seem silly, but that's because it is. Wario and Shake It are putting other games to shame in the charm department. So yeah, Wario's sole motivations are greed and selfishness, but they are a lot more comedic than the usual Nintendo hero's ambitions. Saving princesses? Been there. Babysitting a bubble? Too saccharine. You know, actually, I'm down with the banana horde, but there's nothing like cold hard cash to keep your protagonist a single-minded caricature. After playing Shake It, I realize now that this is how I like Wario best. He'll toss your queen aside like garbage to get to the loot, and he'll twerk his ass off right in front of the camera. Look at the power behind that twerk. Look at it. You could power a small clock radio with that power. 
He's not a traditional hero by any means. In fact, he's more of a comical anti-hero that just happens to have an entire game built around him to accentuate his best features. It's like if we got a game starring Sebulba or Larflees or Butch from Pulp Fiction. But Wario's not the only one brimming with charisma in this game either. It seems like everybody in the Shake Dimension is a character unto themselves. I mean, look at this little chubby parrot. He can hardly stay aloft, and when you do shake him, he turns into dinner. And these mummies look like they're straight up consoling themselves when you stun them. And when Wario manhandles these Goomba knockoffs, their cheeks get so mushed up and it's so cute, I just wanna shake the shit out of it. And the bosses are incredible too. They're so beautifully animated and vivid that we started getting strong Cuphead vibes while fighting them. What do I have to do personally to hang out with this chef in a walk? Shake It's irreverent tone affords opportunities all over the game for things to be more expressive than usual. I forget certain Mario baddies exist all the time, but I don't think I'll ever forget this face. And who would want to? I just wanna moosh this little face. Look at the little eyes. Eee! Admittedly, there's really nothing that special about the kinds of locations you'll visit. It's a platformer, so it's like we're contractually obligated to hit up a jungle, a snowfield. Oh, damn, is that inspired by ancient China? Oh, and of course, a desert. However, the amount of details in the backgrounds is pretty impressive if you stop and take a look at them. Check out these fountains in the Vegas stage. I mean, Shake It literally looks just like a lovely little cartoon during its cutscenes. Who wouldn't want to watch Wario travel to different worlds every week, helping people through happenstance and his quest? to get that money. And that's what this game feels like. The greatest adventure Wario's ever been on. And then there's the soundtrack. Good God, this soundtrack. This sh caught us completely off guard when we first heard it. The genres are as varied as the stages that they're in, but that doesn't mean that the production is spread too thin. No, these songs are shockingly nuanced and pretty well produced. You've got some genuine jazz going on, some funk that's borderline porno-esque, and what I swear sounds like gospel. That is gospel music in a Nintendo game. Cherish it, praise his name. Plus, there are about two tracks per level, so you get a lot of musical bang for your buck. Sure, the music doesn't always feel like it fits the level that it's in thematically. Like, what does soul music have to do with an Aztec temple? I mean, I don't know, I don't care either. It just makes the level that much more memorable and delightful. Like, I'm never gonna forget the temple that sounds like Motown. It does not sound like Motown. You know what I mean, though. I think I realized how special Shake It was when I remembered that there was never really an equivalent Mario platformer on the Wii. The closest we ever got was Super Paper Mario, which was gorgeous, but its art style and 3D elements made it pretty different than the usual 2D adventure. And you could argue New Mario Bros, but I'm gonna stop you right there. So Wario got a pretty nice upgrade from a handheld to a flagship 2D platformer. And all that stuff's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how eclectic this game is. Because even the gameplay, with how it's organized and compartmentalized, makes Shake It accessible and fun for everyone, from the casual to the hardcore completionists. Things seem pretty straightforward when you first step into the Shake Dimension. You casually make your way through some stages and maybe collect some coins along the way, but there's actually a lot more to do in this game than it seems. Whether you're just breezing through or trying to do it all, one of the best aspects of Wario Land Shake It is that it's extremely transparent about all of its potential challenges. But first, let's get this out of the way. Despite being an obvious vehicle for waggle tech, this game controls mostly like a traditional platformer. Players hold the Wiimote sideways so it feels as close as it can to a normal controller, and Wario still got some of his tried and true moves. He still shows off his shoulder bash from his high school days as a charging chuck, and he still wields the almighty power of the booty. The rest of his techniques do require motion controls, such as the ground pound, which is performed by shaking the hell out of the controller. This thing can stun enemies and reveal secrets, like the secret self-hate that you deal with every day, mummy. Shaking the Wiimote will also cause Wario to shake the shit out of the items and the bad guys that he picks up. It makes you feel like a mob enforcer. Where's my money at? Where's the money? Real talk, there's a good amount of shaking in this game. Like, it happens all the damn time. But it's not that bad. You don't have to be that accurate with it. It's just a quick shake. Plus, it feels pretty visceral when you're putting the squeeze on a mark who won't pay you what he owes. There are a few times when some precision tilting comes into play, like when Wario takes aim with an item or in a cannon. But it could be worse, like those couple of submarine levels when you've got a pilot with full motion controls. Ugh. The less said about those, the better. But for the most part, Shaky controls surprisingly well. The good non-submarine levels are pretty much split into two halves. 
First, players travel to the right to collect items and coins. Then, once you set that level's Merfle free from its cage, players travel back towards the left as fast as they can. Now, if this was all that Shaken had to offer, it'd be pretty forgettable, but that's where the missions come in. They're little challenges that each level has in order to make things a bit more demanding. They involve collecting a certain number of coins, reaching the goal within a time limit, or other specialized tasks. They're completely optional, but if you choose to get some of these done, they'll completely change the way these levels feel. And if you're going for that big money, you're gonna end up exploring the entire level, probably revealing even more secrets and greatly extending the time you spend in that stage. Attempting the time missions will turn you into a mini speedrunner, and the other tasks will crank up the difficulty on the platforming, turning some stages into hardcore feats out of nowhere. These missions are the reason why Shake It was as fun for me as it was. As the completionist, I felt compelled to accomplish every single mission I came across. I didn't move on to the next stage until I had done it all, ultimately making the entire game feel longer and richer. Things may have gotten out of hand here and there with trying to beat multiple missions at a time, but that's what the quick reset option and checkpoint systems were for. Thank you for enabling my compulsions. There are also three treasures to find and collect in each level. They don't do anything gameplay wise, but they do encourage players to explore even more and they reward careful thinking and thoroughness. But once again, none of this extra stuff is mandatory. It's totally okay to ignore the treasures and missions and just twerk your way to victory as quickly as possible. But if you're like us and you need to do it all, then Shake It has got you more than covered. This game's road to completion is extremely transparent. The map screen displays exactly how many stages there are per world, how many missions those stages contain, what those missions are, and how many treasures you've got left to find. This kind of organization makes life here at The Completionist so much easier, and it keeps us motivated to go the extra mile too. Filling out these types of checklists gives us that dopamine kick that we're all looking for. Speaking of extras, this game keeps on giving after players beat the game for the first time. First off, the boss stages get their own set of missions, so you can replay them with even more difficulty. And more importantly, players can now play through a few bonus stages in each world. Sure, you could play these stages at any given moment as long as you find their corresponding hidden map item, but those map items get much easier to locate with the indicators that get added to the map screen during the post game. And these bonus stages are where things start to really get tough with more challenging layouts and even more missions. Like up to seven of them for a single stage. Yes, more opportunities to jack fools is exactly what I wanted. Sure, this game never gets that difficult, but the constantly escalating challenge was enjoyable the whole time. And once again, players can pick and choose just how much they want to do, and the game will help you keep perfect track of it all. This is how games should be, but I'm biased since I like to complete things, but whatever. Wario taught me that it's okay to go for the things that you want. Wario Land Shake It rewards its most devoted players with the things that matter most in life. Gaudy symbols of opulence. Players who beat every single stage will receive a crown icon on their save file, showing that they're the Shake King now. And those who collect all the treasures will unlock a completely gilded garage. Wow, Wario's dream finally came true. And yet that butt just keeps on twerking forever. There's also a gallery in which you can check out the game's cutscenes, and more importantly, listen to every song from the soundtrack. Let's not forget that the music in Shake It is also a treasure. Every single moment of completing Wario Land Shake It felt like a privilege. Even though it got lengthy with all there was to accomplish, it never got tedious or boring. Wario, it's been an honor to fight by your side, and I hope you get to go on another adventure in the future. When we completed Wario Land Shake It, there were 35 deaths. That's not counting the countless restarts in our efforts to go for perfect runs. Do not judge us. 39 stages completed. Shoutouts to that Chinese stage though. 99 treasures collected. Tracking stuff down is pretty fun when you remember that you're basically Robin Fools. 177 missions accomplished. With one simple mechanic, this game went from mediocre to being a favorite of mine. 21 hours of total playtime, and one Merfolk Queen tossed aside like garbage in one of the best endings we've ever seen. This game came out of nowhere. It went from something we'd never really heard of to one of our favorite platformers of all time. It's the kind of thing that if you're a casual, you're gonna love this game, but if you're a completionist, you're gonna be so excited with the meaty experience that awaits for you. If you throw in the hilarious art direction and uh, the banging music, you've got yourself a quintessential Wario game. So, with that in mind, guys, we get this game our completionist rating of completed.
That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know the this episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below on what games you want to see coming up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. we got new videos every Wednesdays and Saturday. I've been Gerard. That's Brett. Check out Weekend Warriors and Super Beer Bros. We'll see you guys soon. Peach. Thicker than Malto Meal. Malto Motown Meal. I don't know what I said.